Hi, I'm Sandra Porter, and I'm going to talk today about looking at hydrophobic interactions with IC in 3D. What I'm going to do to start with is open the analysis menu and select sequences and annotations. So I can see these. And I'm going to select the details tab so that I can see where the sequences are. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a whole bunch of hydrophobic amino acids. I think it's easiest to just start with one kind at a time. So I'm going to type an F, which is the one letter code for phenylalanine, and click search. And you can see that the um, phenylalanines in the structure were selected. There are yellow halos. And you can see that there are, um, that the Fs in the sequences are highlighted as well. So it gets selected in both the structure and the sequence. Now what I'm going to do to see these a little bit better is I'm going to change the drawing style. So I get a protein style proteins and I'll make these sphere. That way I get to see the whole electron cloud. And I'm going to change the color. So I open color and I pick atom. That's going to color each atom by its standard coloring style for that element. And it's still a little bit complicated to see. So what I'm going to do is choose view, view selection, and that hides everything but those amino acids. Okay, so now what I want to do is to find amino acids where there are carbons that are close together. And you can see these guys are pretty far apart. Kind of turn it around to see, get a bit better look. And as I do that, I can see these ones look pretty close. This is phenylalanine 109 and phenylalanine 96. What I want to do now to confirm that those carbons are close together is I'm going to measure the distance between them. I open the analysis menu. I select distance between two atoms. And now what I'm going to do is carefully click each one of the carbons. So I hold the Option or Alt key down and click one. And then I hold the Control key down and click the other. So now I've selected both of them. And then I click Display. And that shows me that these two carbons are 3.8 angstroms apart. I have to move it a little bit so that I can see the color a little bit better. But that is close enough to be a hydrophobic interaction because hydrophobic interactions are less than five angstroms apart. OK, but what if I didn't have two amino acids that were close enough together? How could I find examples of hydrophobic interactions? Well, what I can do is I can select additional amino acids. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to reset this. So I opened the View menu. I chose Reset All like I have to do that again. Sometimes I have to do it a few times to get this to work. But it's all reset back to the beginning. If nothing else, I could just reload the structure. All right, so what I'm going to do now is again, I'm going to select phenylalanines. So I type an F, I click search. I've got phenylalanine selected. Now I'm going to save my selection. And I'm going to call this Phi for phenylalanine. And you can see it saved it here. And I can delete the other unnamed version of it. OK, now if I want to add additional amino acids, I can type a letter that represents the one letter code for an additional hydrophobic amino acid appear in the toolbar. And I'm going to ask it to show me, um, oh, uh, tyrosines. So I type a Y and say search. Now you can see Ys are highlighted in the sequence and there are different amino acids highlighted in the structure. And I'm going to save this selection again. So I said save selection and I'm going to make it TYR for tyrosine. And I will delete what I have here. Okay, so I have both selected, but I'm only looking at tyrosines right now. So I want to look at phenylalanines as well. So I click phenylalanine 
I hold the shift button down and click tyrosine. And now both are selected, both are appearing highlighted in the structure and in the sequence. Okay, now I can get rid of this. And what I wanna do now is to change the way they're drawn. So I'll make them both sphere. I'll change the color to atom. I'm gonna hide everything else. So I open view, pick view selection. Now I've got just tyrosines and phenylalanines. And I will look for a couple that seem to be close together. So let's see what we've got here. Looks like, looks like there are several that are close to each other. I think what I might also do to make it easier to see is I'm going to pick, pick them and hide everything else. So I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click this tyrosine right here. I hold down the option key and I click it. I can hold down the control key and click this phenylalanine that I think is pretty close. And now I'm gonna say view selection. So I'm just looking at those two amino acids. Just makes it easier to see. Looks like these ones are actually in the same chain. Tyrosine, I see it's tyrosine 21 and phenylalanine 20. So their interaction is part of the chain folding. Okay, let's see how far apart they are. I choose distance between two atoms. I hold down the option key and click one atom, hold down the control key and click the other. I click display and I see that these carbons are 3.9 angstroms apart. So close enough to be forming a hydrogen, a hydrophobic interaction. And if I'm going to save an image of this with the distance here, what I can do is, um, I can uh, clear the toggle the highlight and clear the selection there. And I can open file and I can say, save files. And I can save this as a original size PNG image that I could upload to a web page and hand in.